All right, I'm going to talk to you guys today about um, methods to help set acreage goals, invite stakeholders to set approachable pledges, and plan for annual increases to develop growth, or something like that. Um, we got a room full of brewers, distillers, farmers, bakers, millers, and we all talk in different increments, different volumes, um, units, pounds, kilograms, barrels, kegs, um, bushels, hectares. Uh, so I, I think the way everybody talks is a little bit different and Nicole's given us a tool to combine those into acreage. I think uh, when you look at consumers and retailers, when they can put a customer looking back towards a farm and knowing that these are farm grown products, it helps us as a Northeast Grain Shed set this uh, image and marketability and movement forward in the right direction. So. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what Wormtown Brewery, uh, where I come from, has done to do this in our own way. And I think JC's right, we haven't done as much as we can, and it's not the easiest thing to do. But as a group, I think we can come up with methods, methods to do it, um, and we'll review some of those. So uh, at Wormtown Brewery, we started in 2010, and we made one beer with all uh, local ingredients. We called it Mass Hole with a W. Uh, we still make a version of it today, and that was pretty good. We felt really good about ourselves. Uh, one of the few days you, you get done and have a beer and pat yourself on the back, we made a beer with local ingredients. Not bad. Uh, the next evolution for us was turning that into a seasonal beer where we made you know four iterations of it a year, and maybe we used, I don't know, a couple thousand pounds. Not bad. Uh, I now know that uh, that's probably about seven tenths of an acre of ground that we used right then. And, and we felt really good then. Um, and then the next evolution for us was something that some other people have talked about. And we use a percentage of local malt in all of our beers. So back years ago when we decided we were going to do it, we call it a piece of mass in every glass. And our internal goal is about 5%. Um, and as we've grown from a couple thousand barrel brewery up to now over 30,000 barrels. That has some real numbers that go with it. Last year we used over uh, 100,000 pounds of northeast grain uh, at the brewery. Um, and now we're at this grain shed, watershed moment and we want to do more. We think we can do more. Um, so I talked to our brewery team and we talked about how we were going to, you know, go forward and we hope the brewery grows but regardless of what our percentage of growth is we want to just add to that. So we're going to add 25,000 pounds of northeast grain shed grain every year accumulatively uh, and you tally it up it should equal in five years about a million pounds of northeast grain shed. So that's what we want to do to move it forward a little bit. And uh, to quote uh, someone uh, that was up here a little while ago, you don't have to be big to make a difference. You don't have to pledge a million pounds to make a difference. Uh, so I want to talk about some approachable goals and pledges that everybody can do. And we can talk about them in terms of, uh, you know, farmers, millers, and uh, what you guys and we can all do to make a difference and push this forward a little bit. So. Um, to me, approachability is something that starts small and grows bigger, kind of like we did with uh, local grains. And so for me, I thought about a pallet of grain, about 2,500 pounds of grain or malt. That's a usable quantity that everybody can get behind. Um, in, in the hop world, you can go and contract 11 pounds of hops. You don't get very far with 11 pounds of hops, but they encourage you to contract it. So I'm going to con encourage everyone here to contract this year one pallet of grain. One extra local northeast grain shed pallet of grain. And what does that mean? What do you get out of a pallet of grain? So for us, I think we can get 40 barrels of beer out of a pallet of grain. That's not bad. Is 40 barrels of beer a viable business? Probably not. So I think we can all contract at least one or two pallets of grain and that gives the confidence going all the way back to the farmer about that being there and that's something they can sell. If you take that pallet of grain and you run it through a distillery, that's about 600, 750 milliliter 
bottles of whiskey. That's a good amount. If you're not selling 600 uh, bottles of whiskey as a distiller or some other spirit, it's not going to be a good year. Contract a couple pallets. Uh, 2,500 pound, uh, 2,500 pounds in loaves of bread, about 2,500 loaves. All the bakers out there, you should be able to contract a pallet of local flour. So to me, that's approachable. That's small, and it rolls up, and it gets bigger. Um, so I, I talked a little bit about uh, the pledges. We still have the, uh, the image map up here. I want to go through some of them and, and how me as a brewer and, and Wormtown as a brewery has been able to uh, get on board with some of them. Uh, farm visit should be pretty easy. There's a lot of farmers in the room. Uh, at the social hour later, please meet them. Uh, but I've been out to uh, Clover Hill with the Prouties in uh, Hardwick. Uh, great people. I love stopping over there. Uh, but don't just show up and Instagram it and uh, pretend you're a farmer with a pitchfork. Do some business while you're there. Buy some stuff. Uh, it's a two-way relationship. Um, you know, if a restaurateur comes and gets a tour of the brewery and hangs out and has a couple of pints on me, and he buys a Sixtal this year and rotates me off and doesn't do any more business, I'm not going to be very happy. Um, think about that when you get into these relationships and make these pledges. It's, it's supposed to mean something. It's not supposed to just be a social exercise. Uh, educate your customers with uh, social media. JC touched on that. Uh, your website, your retail locations. Uh, you use them to promote your products. Use it to promote your connection to the Northeast Grain Shed. Uh, an acreage commitment. So. Seven acres is 25,000 pounds of grain, thanks to that uh, grain calculator. So we're going to add seven acres of grain to what we use every year. So right now, I calculated we're at around 30 acres for our 2019 local grain usage. And um, I told you that seven tenths of an acre is that 2,500 pounds. Use the grain shed calculator, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, I plugged in our 100,000 pounds and I plugged in our 30,000 barrels last year and I found out that in every 16 ounce case of beer we make, uh, we have four square feet of local grain. That's across all of our beers. And then when you get into beers like Masshole, which right now is a light American lager at 4%, a 16 ounce can of that has two square feet of grain in it. So, those are some numbers I didn't know. That's some stuff I can pass on to my uh, customers. Uh, get the Grain Shed logo on uh, your labels with beers that use local grains. And I'm sure there's going to be some uh, regulations around using that. The uh, percent commitment. We've got a 5% commitment. Some other breweries have higher. I think 100% is a great goal, but it's a lot harder the bigger you are. Uh, mall house visit. Valley Malt's great. Make sure you buy something when you're there. A pallet would be nice. Uh, Blue Ox, go and visit Joel up in uh, Maine. I've been to both of those. Uh, the first uh, flour mill I visited was Farmer Ground, and uh, they were nice to have us there. Uh, and I also got to visit uh, Torres Farm when I was there as well. So great things to do, um, and they bring you closer to another dimension of this Northeast Grain Shed. Uh, field Day. Cornell was uh, nice enough to have me. They didn't have a choice. But I found out when I was there, I was the first brewer to go to the Cornell Field Day. Shame on all of you New York brewers who never showed up. I went last year again. I was the second brewer to ever show up after myself the previous year. <laughs> so in 2020, someone please break my streak and actually come, please. Um, UVM also has a, uh, a field day. Uh, come out to that and uh, support them. Um, promote grains on your menus. Uh, we use uh, some pretzels with some local flour from ground up, uh, the mill over in uh, Hadley, and we've got Wicked Twisted making them, and we promote that on our menu in our tap rooms, and it brings it to another level, just like JC had with the uh, past pretzel, present beer. Same idea. 100% local grain product, um, very popular, and I think that is a great way to connect with the consumer. I do want to do some of these other ones I haven't, I, I haven't done them all. I want to visit a uh, green market grain stand. Um, I'm thinking about writing an article about local grain, but it's a little scary, so I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Um, 
contract. I want to end the list with contract. Uh, I think it's very important. We talked about the pallets of grain. Um, and I think one of the things and one of the many things that contracting does uh, is it secures that raw material that you need to make something. Uh, it also uh, locks in a price. For me as a producer, that's important. Uh, it reduces short-term volatility because I, I know that I'm going to be able to get it at a price, at a quality. When I go out and market a beer and say I'm using local stuff in it, I feel a lot better if I have a contract on it. If you have a beer you're marketing that says it's local and you don't have a contract, I don't know how you sleep at night. That could go away in about two seconds. And uh, it's only going to take one hurricane or hailstorm or who knows to get rid of it for you. And if you got to put beer in that package that has wording on it that says there's local in there, you better be able to back that up. Um, for us, we make the mass whole lager, and uh, the idea was to have Massachusetts grown barley, hops, the whole nine yards. We blew through our allotment. We were waiting for the new crop. It didn't work out the way we wanted. And instead of putting the liquid in the can with the intention that it was all Massachusetts grown, uh, we went into the Northeast Grain Shed and got upstate New York barley, and we went out and we paid for sleeved cans that had the right wording on it. We still have that trailer of cans off to the side, and when I get some more Massachusetts grown barley to put in those cans, they'll go in there with Massachusetts barley, not with, no offense to anybody in New York, but it's not Massachusetts grown, that's what I put on there. If I had put New York grown and I got it from Mass, it would have been the wrong thing. To me, that's integrity, that's truth in marketing, and contracting makes that possible. Currently, most of us brewers and bakers can just call up a distributor and order stuff overnight. Commodity, malt, flour, whatever it is. And it's one of the reasons that contracting on this smaller size isn't as prevalent as it should be. Um, but I think we need to start looking more at the hop model, which I know uh, Bart and maybe Jason talked about a little bit earlier. Um, secure those raw materials. Uh, the people that got your back, your miller, your maltster, your farmers, Show them you got their back and you're not just going to buy it occasionally when it makes sense to you, that you're going to get a certain amount from them every year. Annual increases. So we all want to grow as a business and once you contract, that's good, but every business wants to grow. Try to tie your increases to either the percentage that your business is going to grow or like I just expressed, an actual poundage increase every year or just take a look at the pledge sheet and add something to it every year. Do a collaboration brew. If you go to page 18 in your uh, booklet uh, of the Northeast Grain Shed, you'll see the uh, Northeast Grain Shed collaboration beer uh, that we did with uh, a lot of local brewers. It's going to be on later at 5 o'clock, so if you stick around for that, you'll be able to uh, enjoy it. But on page 18, it shows you the type of stuff you can do with marketing and advertising. It's got the number of square feet on there that uh, the grain actually took up. It's got, let me find page 18. It's got all the names of the breweries. It's got the logo for the Northeast Grain Shed, the malt houses and the farms that donated the grain for it. Uh, and one of the things I'm the most proud of is uh, Wormtown Brewery is going to donate the net proceeds from this 30 barrel batch of beer to the Northeast Grain Shed uh, to help their efforts in the coming year. So. Um, yeah. And we'll do another one next year when we do the, uh, the beer fest. So it's something everybody can get involved in. Um, any of the mall houses that donated malt, thank you very much. If I haven't met you personally, I'd like to see you and, and have a beer with you tonight and thank you for sending that grain. Uh, I promise you we did you right, we took care of it, we mashed it in very softly and uh, the beer tastes good. So uh, those are some of the things that you can do uh, to add to and amplify and continue uh, as you go along setting pledges and increasing and growing this whole thing because we need to do this together step by step across the whole supply chain or else somebody's going to be left out or feel like they're not going to be able to participate and if they start lagging behind that means on the other end we're not going to have something. If the farmers don't plant it, 
the malsters won't be able to malt it, as brewers we won't be able to buy it, or as bakers you won't have the flour, and then we're not going to be able to give it to our consumers. And I think our consumers want it. And the quality's better, and I like coming to events like this and hanging out with you guys. So let's not let this go away, all right? Thank you.